channel that guy sews if you've not been to my channel before then I upload a video once a week on either sewing DIY or fashion so if you haven't subscribed then please click the link down below and subscribe For today's tutorial I'm going to be doing something that everyone is always requesting and everyone always loves to buy as soon as you book a summer holiday or as soon as like you get in that summer mood the thing you look for are shorts namely like swimming shorts and stuff like that so I've decided to do a tutorial on some swimming shorts I've created the pattern myself within this tutorial and I'm gonna talk you through how I created it and how you guys can get the same effect before everyone jumps on me and says oh my god they're so short oh my god they're so short that's how I like my shorts I like to get a nice tan on my legs so I've decided to make some short shorts it's completely up to you. All you need to do is add more length at the bottom for the desired length that you want for your short. I really did want to make these striped short shorts and I just know that they're gonna look so nice when I've got a really nice tan and hopefully lose a little bit more weight before my holiday. <laughs> so if you stick around, you'll be able to see how to make these short shorts right the way from making the pattern to actually constructing the shorts and pattern matching back pockets which you probably can't see i hope that you guys really like this tutorial it's one that i've been really excited to do and i'm really happy with it so if you haven't please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below thanks for watching okay then guys so the materials that you're going to need for this tutorial are some scissors a measuring tape a large ruler to draw out the pattern a seam ripper some weights and some pins a cutting board and a rotary cutter. You're also going to need your desired fabric. As you can see, I've chosen this nice yellow stripe. You're going to need some elastic that can go around your waistband. I've decided to use a one and a half inch white elastic. And you're also going to need some form of lace that's going to go around the waistband to tie up the shorts itself. The last two things that you're going to need are some pattern paper or tracing paper and a pencil or pen. Now before you actually get started on constructing these shorts, you need to draw the pattern. And before you can draw the pattern, you need to make sure you take all of these measurements. So when you're taking your widest waist sort of measurement around your bum, you're going to add four inches for the seam allowance, because there's four seams and we're gonna use a half an inch seam allowance on each. And I would also add two to three inches just for a little bit of comfort. For the top front and top back to under seam, I would measure from where you want the shorts to actually start, right around to that under centre seam, and then I would minus half an inch. That's all you need to do for those two sections. The reason for that is because you're going to be adding in a waistband, but then you're also going to be taking out the seam allowance at the under seam. If that sounds confusing, I'm sure you'll understand a little bit more when I actually get into drafting the pattern. For the length, I recommend you measuring down the side seam from where the shorts start to exactly where you want the shorts to end. That measurement is true to size because what you lose in the waistband, you will actually gain in the seam allowance at the bottom when you're doing up the hem. The last thing you want to do is measure your desired leg width and then add two inches for the two seams which will be within the leg itself. And that's all the measurements that you do need for this. Now I'm gonna talk you through how to transfer these measurements onto the pattern itself. So the first thing that you do is divide your hip measurement or the widest measurement by four and then add one inch to that for the two half, seam, half inch seam allowances. This is going to be the first line across the top of your pattern. And then next you're going to add in the side seam with the desired length that you should have written down. The line that goes across the bottom then is going to be the leg width line. So what you do for that is with the front side you're probably going to have less width and with the back side probably have a little bit more. This will give you more room in the back seam. So my desired width was 26 inches, so I made sure that my front was 12 inches and my back was 14, obviously with the half an inch seam allowance each side. So my front was 13 inches and my back was 15 inches. 
Knowing that my front seam needed to be nine inches, I knew that my inside leg could come up around three inches to allow for that nine inches to fit in a nice curve. What I then did was just drafted a nice smooth curve. I then measured this out and realized I needed to go a little bit further to make sure I got my full nine inches in and then just redrafted the curve and made my new inside leg seam line. What I've actually done here is used exactly the same process by using the back measurements and not the front measurements to create this back pattern. Just take your time with it and make sure you're happy with it before you proceed. As you can see, by adding the width in the back leg, you actually give yourself more room for the curved seam which is going to fit around your bum a lot nicer. I then just proceeded to cut both these pattern pieces out before making the waistband piece. Now because I'm using stripes and I want to make sure that I pattern match these stripes from the waistband right the way down, I'm actually constructing four separate waistband pieces which are exactly the same as the two front and the two back pieces so that when the four waistband pieces are put together they will pattern match the shorts themselves. So using the same measurement as the top part of that pattern piece and going across and then I decided to then go up four inches because you know that you're going to lose half an inch seam allowance in each leaving me my three inches left which is the one and a half inch waistband. So the next steps for this are cutting out these pattern pieces. As you can see, I've lined up my pattern pieces with the same stripes every time so that this is a nice symmetrical pattern right the way around the shorts. And once I made the front one, I flipped it over and pattern matched it to the back so it is symmetrical on the front and I did exactly the same thing when I cut out the back. In order to cut the waistband out, I actually matched it up with the top of the pattern of the shorts on the front and on the back so that the lines will continue right the way up the pattern from the shorts into the waistband. Now I wanted to make two patch pockets for the back pockets of these shorts so what I did was I laid the shorts out and I measured how, roughly how big I wanted this patch pocket to be and I decided I wanted a 6x6 six six inch patch pocket and so I added an inch and a half at the top which is going to be folded under and then half an inch at the bottom and half an inch at the side seam. So essentially I then cut out an 8 by 7 inch patch pocket. But what I'm doing here is actually just deciding where I want this pocket to be so that I can match it up with the lines on the shorts itself. So now that I got over to the sewing machine, the first thing that I done was fold under and iron down the inch and a half of the seam allowance. So I folded down half an inch and then folded an extra inch over to hide away the raw edges. Starting and ending with a back stitch, just running right the way down that one inch seam allowance. Once that's done, I then took it over to the ironing board again and ironed under and ironed under my half inch seam allowance right the way around the outside of this pocket. I then matched it up with the shorts itself and laid it under my sewing machine and just used a straight stitch again, keeping it nice and close to the edge of the patch pocket all the way around the edge of this pocket itself. And as you can see, this is how it looks and it is matched up. I then repeated this process for the other pocket. The next thing that I done was I got my front and my back pattern piece and I laid them both right sides together and then making a half an inch seam allowance down the outside seam and down the inside. Now what I've decided to do in this tutorial is overlock and then top stitch back over all of the seams. This is to really reinforce it, you don't have to overlock, you can just use a zigzag or overlocking stitch on your normal sewing machine. I've done this because it makes it look really professional in the same way that you get shop bought swimming shorts and it really reinforces those stitches. So the two seams that I've just sewn, I've gone over and overlocked them before pressing those seams to one side and then I've taken it back over to the sewing machine where I've top stitched this down with a roundabout between a quarter and a half inch seam allowance. I like to use the edge of my presser foot as a guidance. And again, I've just repeated this process for the other two pattern pieces. So matching up the front and the back again and doing the side seam and the inside seam, overlocking and top stitching before moving on. The next thing I've done is turned one leg right way out and kept the other one inside out and I've then inserted the leg that's right way out into the inside of the other one 
and used my pins and I've then pinned them from that center seam right on the inside leg right the way through to the center front seam and right the way through to the center back seam where I will now proceed to do a half an inch seam allowance right the way through before overlocking and then top stitching this as well. The next thing I've done is grab my four waistband pieces and made sure that they match up in the same fashion that the shorts match up. So looking at the shorts with the front two front pieces and the two back pieces and matching the waistband pieces up in exactly the same way, sewing it in exactly the same fashion by straight stitch normally and then overlocking and then top stitching it again in the same way as you have done with the shorts. So that way it will match up right the way around the waistband to the short. What I have then done using, using the stripes on the waistband as a great matching reference point is just pin the waistband to the shorts right sides together and then sewn half an inch seam allowance and overlocked the raw edges. And as you can see, all of the stripes match right the way from the shorts into the waistband. Now the next bit I decided to do, I had to do manually because I don't have my buttonhole foot, I just can't find it anywhere. So I decided to make two little buttonholes, which I've then sliced open, which will then enable the lace to come inside as a drawstring for the shorts. Um, all I've done is used a really narrow zigzag right the way and made a little box twice over on two points at the front center front of the waistband once you've made those little boxes or buttonholes just take a seam ripper or a pair of scissors and just cut into them making sure you don't cut through any of the stitching the next thing you need to do is grab your elastic and just put it around your waist until you feel that it's comfortable and make a note of that and just chop the amount of elastic off that you need before putting it into your sewing machine and I've decided to overlap the two pieces of elastic and then using a nice zigzag stitch twice over right the way from the top to the bottom of that bit of elastic. Using that part as a centre back point, I then put four pins, one in the front, one in the back and one in each side of this elastic as reference points and then match this up with the centre front, centre back and two side seams of the waistband. Now using those same four points and pinning the elastic into the waistband, I've then taken it to my overlocker where I'm actually going to be overlocking the elastic to that raw edge of the waistband. You can do this by using just a zigzag stitch and you're going to stretch it out between the pins nice and evenly and just sew right along that outside seam. Stretching the elastic nice and evenly as you go. What you're now going to do is push your waistband seam allowance up as you flip over that elastic over the top of that seam allowance and then you're going to put pins in. What you're going to do is place the shorts underneath the sewing machine and you're going to do a straight stitch about one eighth of an inch from the seam that connects the waistband to the shorts and making sure that you're stretching it out nice and evenly right the way around the shorts. Once I've done that, I then do the same thing, one eighth of an inch from the outside curve of the shorts. And then once I've done that, I've actually done a quarter inch seam allowance from each of those sewing lines, which should then leave you with a nice narrow tunnel right the way around that waistband, which you should be able to then just feed the drawstring through. In order to do this, we're gonna use the same technique that loads of people do when they're doing similar jobs such as this. So you're going to get a safety pin and put it through the end of the drawstring. You're going to feed that safety pin firstly through that buttonhole that you made and then right the way through that channel that you've created within the shorts and back out the other buttonhole. Once you've done that, you should have both of your ends out of the buttonholes and then do a double knot or a knot so that way it won't go back through that hole and you won't lose your drawstring. In order to hem these shorts, I've just done a double fold of a one inch seam allowance and just put a straight stitch all the way around to enclose the raw edges. The last thing that I've decided to do, as you guys will know if you watch any of my videos, is to put in tags for the clothing so it looks like it is shop bought because I like to make this clothing and I like it if people actually think that it is bought from a shop because then you know that you've done the right job. So once you've finished that, just chuck on your swimming shorts and you're finished.